So John, as far as I know, you've been one of the only two drummers sharing uh, the drum seat with Art Blakey. How was the experience? What did you learn? And uh, any comments about it? Okay. Well, you have long-ended questions that uh, really have long answers. But uh, my time with Art Blakey was split between kind of two capacities. Uh, when I first uh, started with Art Blakey, I was the second drummer in a big band. Mm -hmm. um, that was 1980. And the big band was really a small big band. It was 11 pieces. but um, it was uh, Art and I both playing drum set. Most people would say, "Yeah, you." Play. At the same time too. Yeah, at the same time. Yeah. Yes. Most most people say, "Hey, what, you play percussion?" No, it's two drum sets. <laughs> and Art would always say when people ask him, "Hey, why do you have two drummers?" And he would say, "If two horn players can play together, two drummers can play together." <laughs> See, that concept is you know it's it's only unusual in say in. Western yeah. music, because African music, Afro-Cuban music, there's three, four, or more, or five, ten percussionists. So, so, uh, but that was my first uh, role with him in the big band that consisted of uh, was Billy Pierce on tenor. It had two sets of brothers in the band, Winton and Branford Marcellus, and uh, Winton, of course, played trumpet. Branford played uh, alto and baritone, uh, and then Bobby Watson was the other alto player. And uh, then Kevin and Robin Eubanks. Mm. So uh, Kevin played guitar and Robin played mm -hmm. trombone. And then there was uh, the trumpet player from Art's small band prior to the big band, Valerie Ponomarev. He was a Russian guy, mm. trumpet player from Russia. And then James Williams played piano. Charles Fambro was the bass player. And uh, like I said, Art and myself. So my time in the big band was a little bit short-lived because <coughs> we did like a tour of Europe that lasted for, I don't know, maybe three or four weeks or something like that. We started in Sweden and we did all over uh, Scandinavia, Norway, Sweden. Um, <coughs> then we probably went to your country, to Italy. Italy. We did like, you know, Bari and uh, Ravenna Rome. and Brindisi and you know, a bunch of little towns actually, uh, where they just, you know, they're like little olive villages, you know. There was yeah. one town, I can't even remember the name, where, where our dressing room was the police station. No way. Yeah, because it was like in the town square, right? Wow. And there was one government building, and then the stage was right outside the building, right? Oh my right? god. So inside where our dressing room was the police department. Yeah. But we played a lot of those little towns in Italy, I remember. It was, uh, you know, uh, was a guy who did booking uh, Alberto Alberti. Mm. He was like a legendary booking agent in, in wow. Italy. So, and then we would go to Germany and do you know several cities or dates in Germany, uh, Belgium. Uh, so it was great because it was my first time seeing Europe, and uh, you know I was playing with our Blake. It was a time actually we played in Torino, oh, Torino. and a big soccer stadium. Wow. And uh, um, for jazz festival. Yes. I don't remember the name of it, but it was, I remember it was in Torino in a big, big soccer festival. Because that day we were in the hotel having lunch and I came down to the, to the restaurant and saw Art at a table with a guy, you know, so I, of course, I went over the table and, and he said in his Art Blakey voice, he said, John, you know who this is? And I said, no, I said, it's Kenny Clark. Wow. It was Kenny Clark. <laughs> so I'm sitting there with Art Blakey and Kenny Clark and said, Hey Kenny, you want to sit in with us tonight? You want to play with us tonight? Kenny Clark's like, sure, why not? So that night, the big band was Art Blakey on drums, Kenny Clark on drums, and me on drums in the back. <laughs> and I'm sitting there, oh, like, I'm, I'm going like, <laughs> that's, legends. that's Art Blakey. That's Kenny Clark. I better I'm, swing. <laughs> no, I'm like, what am I doing here? <laughs> and that same night, that, that was a big festival, so um, Max Roach's group, M. Boom, was wow. playing the next night. So as I'm up there with those two guys, right, I look over and through the stage back entrance, I see Max Roach walking across the, the <laughs> soccer field. And then like Omar Clay and uh, Roy Brooks and Freddie Waits, these were all the guys in Max's percussion ensemble. And uh, Warren Smith, and so I'm like, oh man, this is like crazy. <laughs> and then Roy Haynes was there that night no too way. because I think he played before us. So. 
if, and that's the way it was in you, you know in Europe with all those jazz festivals they're always yeah. you know if you go to Montreux or North Sea you know, there's actually a, a recording of that big band Art Blake and the Jazz Messengers big band live at Montreux and North nice. Sea Jazz Festival so so that was pretty you know um, a pretty special experience and time and like I said we did maybe four weeks a uh, uh, tour of Europe and then we came back to the yes. States and Art went back to a small group mm -hmm. uh, and I don't know maybe two or three months after that I get this call for him from him and he wants me to to be his road manager Wow he didn't, of course he didn't put it that way he just said hey I need you to go down south with me and I was like well for how long you know I don't know you got to call the manager were you teaching already no no well I, I was doing some part part-time teaching at the University of Mass in Amherst which is my school and where I lived I still lived in Northampton Mass which is a little town of, of Western Massachusetts and so uh, anyways what transpired was I I went on this one trip of like the Caribbean we went to like uh, Martinique and Gua Guadeloupe which are the French Caribbean and then we I think we played Fort Lauderdale maybe went on to Houston or something like that and at, at any rate, it, it led to my becoming his road manager, which lasted for about two and a half years. <laughs> so I was, wow. I was watching him. You know, Art Blakey worked 50 weeks out of the year if he could, or 48 wow. or whatever. He, he was always traveling, always working because he had to. So virtually I'd be watching him play, you know, five, six nights a week uh, for almost two and a half years. Have you seen the book that I, I wrote yeah, about? So I have it. that's how I was able to write that book because... You know, I, I'm sitting there, my, my job as road manager was really, I mean, that's a nice name for about 12 different jobs. <laughs> you're the driver, you're the sound man, you're the MC. Sound man too? <laughs> yes, yes, very often. I, I even co-produced a couple of his records because, oh, really? you know, I, I heard the band every night, so if I'm in the studio with uh, the engineer, I, I, so, but that's another story. I mean, uh, you know, I was a uh, physician. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I was bookkeeper. I was, you know, uh, I mean, the, the job was, it's kind of like this job. It was 24 hours a day because yeah. when he called you up and said, hey, I need, to go, I need you to take me over here or whatever, it was really, I came to Berkeley in 1982 and the, the faculty were teaching 30 hours a week. And I was like, man, that's, that's a relief. I've been doing like <laughs> 60 hours or 80 hours a week yeah. as a road manager. So it was like, Ah, I get to stay in the place. So, so that was really the bulk of my time with Art Blakey was those uh, two plus years as, as road manager. So, and I mean, of course, I learned a lot about music and drumming, but I mean, there was so much uh, that you learn from being around Art about life too, you know, and about the music business, about the, you know, the history of jazz. It was really, uh, it was a special time. I wouldn't want to do it again, but <laughs> a lot of uh, those little lessons too you can find in, in the Art Blakey. Do you have a copy that we can uh, showcase you know, here? I, I had one copy that uh, I just gave to Yaron, and he got a copy. I think I took it home. So, oh, okay. But you can find it easily. It's an Alfred music. It's called Art Blakey's Jazz Messages, and take note, guys. Art Blakey's Jazz Messages, Alfred music. But, of course, it's all transcriptions of, of the stuff he played, I mean, his vocabulary, really. But interspersed throughout the, the musical stuff, the, the no, notated drum stuff in there, there's little anecdotes yeah, of, I all of them. <laughs> things that he would tell me or he would tell other members of his band that were very, uh, I mean, I, like the one outstanding thing that he told me one night was really long after I was his road manager, but he came to Boston uh, actually to receive an honorary doctorate from <laughs> from Berkeley. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, Art Blakey being Art Blakey, when he got here, you know, Billy Pierce and I were both in the band together, so we were around him when he came. And so he said, okay, where, you know, where do you guys want to go tonight? Let's, I want to hang out. So we took him over to a jazz club that used to be in Cambridge, it's gone now, it's called 1369 Jazz Club. And uh, so we took him over there, and of course we ended up down in the, in the office with the owners of the club, sitting around having a drink, talking, whatever, you know. And uh, at some point, I, I decided I would go upstairs and go to the bar and get a beer, you know. And so I came up. And when you came up out of the, the basement of the 1369, 
you went, the stage was right here. And so you had to go by the stage. So as I'm walking by the stage, the drummer, his name is Grover Mooney, he's a, was a Boston drummer, good jazz drummer. He said, hey, Ramsey, you want to sit in? And I said, okay, yeah, sure, why not? So I sat and I played a couple of tunes, right? And then I went back downstairs where Art Blakey was. In, and uh, I didn't know it at the time, but Billy Pierce told me later, he said, when I was playing, Art leaned over to him and said, Billy, who's that playing up there? Sounds like John. <laughs> and so I, I didn't know that, but when I came back down, I sat, sat down next to Art, and he leans over to me, he goes, John, you know when you play, you don't have to prove nothing. All you got to do is swing. And that just hit me like, boom! Because he heard something. He heard me. Yeah, probably I'm, I'm up there thinking, oh, Art's downstairs. i got to really play something, right? But it was just a, a general sort of, um, you know, approach that probably whenever I played, I, I probably felt that way, you know, like i got to really. And he just, That's what I do, too. He just heard that. And he, he you know, and he, he just said, you know, when you play. And it, it, it just, it was a huge lesson, you know. <laughs> when you play... You don't have to prove anything. All you got to do is swing, and that kind of. If you think about his style, you know, he's he was that was his thing, man. He would swing you into bad health, so to speak. So, the lessons from Art were sometimes like that, you know. They weren't like they play this this way. There yeah, were plenty yeah. of those too, but uh, sometimes they were bigger. So. I think those are the best ones, though. Yeah, because they have an impact and they stay with you usually. So. Yeah. Gotta try to remember that though. Ha, 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 ha.